Hey yo folks, Lydicus here, back more Fire Emblem Heroes. Today we continue on the story of book 8. I'm still having trouble keeping track of what book we are on. But eventually I'll get it. <laughs> then again, with all these month-long breaks, it's kind of hard to remember where we are. Anyway, in the previous one, I'm luckily able to remember that we were dealing with Ress of Elgar, who absolutely handled me. <laughs> I, was, I was not ready for that. But it doesn't seem like we'll be dealing with uh, another member of the Healing Hands this time around, but instead we'll be dealing with Engage. And as such, I decided to bring some familiar faces to those people. Behold, Legendary Lear, who's running base kit. Mythic Boomera, who's running base kit. I just gave her Glimmer. Male Alir, who I think you can still get for free at this time by simply just you know, logging in. I don't know, I might be wrong now though. But he's running base kit, I just gave him bonus doubler, and as you can see, he is engaged to Emblem Month, who I also have. And finally, I have Brave Lynn, cause, um, Elios, and whatever the country Ivy and Hortensia and Zato and them are part of, apparently Lynn is the emblem for them. The land, the country of knowledge or something like that? Yet. I'm very curious, why the win? Yeah, whatever. But yeah, here she is. She's got the most unique build here. We don't have a resident resplendent. Well, I do have Soren. However, I don't care for Soren, so he doesn't really have a great build or a build to begin with at all. He's level one in my reserves. So I brought Lin instead. Hopefully, you guys are okay with that. In any case, we're gonna be moving forward with Book 8, Chapter 4, Imperial Blood. Let's get going. Mother and daughter. Hmm. Who would that be talking about? Oh, wait. Henriette and Sharina. Oh, hi there. Just gonna make sure this isn't too loud. Uh, 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 uh. You were that close to killing Prince Alphonse, were you? Uh, uh. Yes. It appears Reddit Husker has not betrayed us. I know, she's happy to hear that. See, I was thinking that that doesn't it seem a bit suspicious to you? I have a mission to attend to. My probe of their defenses is complete. I need only complete the operation. Uh, the Emblem Emperor is located at the Royal Villa to the west. There is nothing standing in the way. With the Emperor assassinated, there's no way that people will go along with any peace trees. But will Emba sink back into its old hatred for Aster? Hmm. Beyond the mission, none of that is our concern. There is only the mission we've been given. Alright, I don't really understand what's about to happen, but yeah, alright. I just know that... It seems Press Felger is going to be dealing with Veronica first. But I guess it should be the other way around. We're nearly to the rendezvous point. Oh, I'm so looking forward to seeing Princess Veronica. Hey, hey. So, I actually know this music track. This one and I think another one, it's got like Sandstorm in the top. Bright Sandstorm, I think that's what it is. Those are the two like engaged tracks I've heard and I listen to frequently. So when I heard this music, when the trailer began, I actually knew what game it was going to be. So, you know, I'm growing. I'm learning more about Engage. Yay. Anyway, this guy. Apparently he's a fan favorite. And uh, people are actually surprisingly bummed out about him being a, a four-star focus. I feel, I'm not too sure how people feel about that, right? Isn't that great? That means you can easily get him. But I guess it's best that the character is like amazing and great rather than not holding a special weapon or a gimped weapon for that matter in some cases. But he's good. He's got an incredible amount of speed and I do not appreciate that one bit. Outspeeding both Inigo and uh... I'm sorry. No, Inigo. It's Inigo. Outspeeding both Inigo and Lap Lapis? Is that her name? Now. Yes. Is it a bit surprising and a bit much? Eh, we'll turn on healing animations. Oh. 
Oh, not making any movements, I see. So, I've been taking a look at the Fortune Bonds. At the moment, it seems pretty nice and simple. As we have... Uh... Kagetsu's Fortune Bonds so far has included Navarre and Long Ku. And the funny thing is with Long Ku's, I actually had a similar thought. Oh, also Emblem Mart's right there. <laughs> I didn't think about it. I was kind of hoping, like, the plan was I would have trouble. And then I could make, I would have a little bit where I go, oh no, I'm having trouble. What can I do? Uh, I know, emblem, engage, and then you know I swap in Marth, and I, I go on the whole little spiel to explain. And, you know, I thought it'd be funny. In any case, I didn't plan that far ahead. <laughs> All right, so looks like we're at the villa. And this is familiar terrain. Isn't this more on the Asker side of things? In any case, this was in book six, I believe. Princess Veronica, it's been too long, has it? I'm so happy to see you again. Yes, and I you. I wish we hadn't the need for such secrecy. Oh, is that right? But there is something I needed to meet with you about. What is it you need? Uh, where's everyone else? Without some sort of intervention, my mother will be assassin- You have a mom? What? I mean, I I thought she was the ruling force. Well, maybe she is still the ruler, but she just has parents. That would be weird, though. Like, maybe one of them retired, I guess? I'm confused. Hmm. Then, Embla's Emperor is being targeted. What? No, I will... That's confusing. This whole time, we've hardly even known that Veronica has a mother. I remember vaguely hearing about her father in, like, book six, maybe. But more so about the fact that she has several siblings from several different parents and whatnot, or at least mother from different women. That's the case with Bruno and Leticia. I don't rem remember hearing her ever talk about her actual parents, though. Especially if one if her mother is the emperor of all people. That's. I feel like that's something that I've either just forgotten because it's been that long, or something that just didn't bother to mention. Which, to be fair, heroes just doesn't bring stuff up, and sometimes they'll just drop something. Hmm. Embla's emperor is being targeted. How did you learn this information? You are aware we have our own order of group, order of heroes in Embla, yes. The little group Leticia once led. The, uh... Something order? The information came from them. I completely forgot about those guys. The Curse Directive! Right, it usually helps when there's more than just one member. <laughs> That's really, like, known. The Curse Directive. And we'll refrain from asking how they obtain their intel. If you trust it, Princess Veronica, we can as well. Has the Emperor been placed under guard? She's currently at the Royal Villa. Any of the fences there are more than show- or are there are more for show than anything. It's a place of ceremony and refuge. No one would think she'd be a target while she's there. Unfortunately, you'll need something a little more substantial than that. In Nembla, the role of Imperial Guard is a job passed down through a family family bloodline. Generation to generation. Okay, this is more news. Guarding the Emperor is a position of honor, and the family has grown in influence. The Count at the head of their house would never allow the duty to pass to anyone else nor willingly accept help. What's more, the Count does not believe the Emperor is vulnerable. And so is surely unprepared. I don't understand. How could that be? 
Emblems do not believe any enemy nation could pose a threat. That's crazy, given what happened with, uh... Well, actually, Embla hasn't really been under attack, actually. I guess the closest would be Nidavellir, but Nidavellir was more after Asker than anything else. And Moose Spell was an ally country. Asker has pushed for peace for many years, so no one believes you would target the Emperor. Similarly, the nobles within Embla would not target the Emperor herself. So there is no reason to anticipate an assassination attempt, or so they believe. Reckless. So does the Count know that there's a threat? I shared what I know. I wasn't taken seriously. As the Emperor's daughter, could you relay the message directly? I tried. She would not see me. She is not fond of me. I see. Gotcha. Alright, loving mother. We got plenty of those in Fire Emblem. They usually don't they usually meet the same fate that all parents do in Fire Emblem though. So they're not that special. In her eyes, if there is a plot for the throne, as heir I must be behind it, planning her downfall. Of course. She has heard too many rumors swirling through the Imperial Court. No trust! Oh, Princess Veronica. Oh, I'm so sorry. I still want to protect her. Partly because it will be necessary for us to establish peace between our realms. And partly because I do, I truly do not want her to die. Oh, of course, stop tearing up, Sharina. Stop it, you're too soft. There is no way we, as Askrins, will be able to guard the Emperor closely. But we can spread the word about a possibility of assassination among those on the Asker's side as well. What will that do? Other than that... Surely there's more we can do to help! Can we do nothing to protect Veronica's mother? I mean, can we assign some heroes or something? It's not like... Embla's unknown to have heroes under their control. Veronica more so than anyone. Speaking of, where's Xander? I mean, he probably wouldn't work, because he's probably known for working under Veronica at this point. Thank you, Sharina. Simply the fact that she cares so much is a comfort to me. Whew, that was, that was part one. Adorable artist. All right. It's about to get annoying. Oh, hi, Ratatosker. I'll see what I can find out. If I learn anything useful, I'll tell you as soon as I can. Thank you, Ratatosker. If the Emperor is assassinated, it could well destroy any chance of peace we have. We cannot allow these assassins to ruin what we fought so hard for. Oh. <laughs> Asker's beauty is out of this world. Literally. I hope my drawings will capture that. Alright, Rosado. You weirded me out a little bit at first. But once I found out that you are a fellow artist... You have my approval and my handshake. However, I do not like you as a unit. You are going to be very annoying. You're introducing some annoying things as well. Rosado, very good. Very good hero. Make no mistake, which probably helps to show why I'm so annoyed with him. Mainly this. <laughs> Wyvern Rift is an absurdly good skill, I gotta say. At least on first glance. Stat drops aside, the fact that it takes into account your speed and defense, just like a Pegasus Fight 4, with speed and res respectively, the fact that it just reduces damage by, like, a good bit. Well, sorry. Reduce damage and force attack by... X equals units defense instead of combat, minus 35. Well, might as well just say 7. But it's for brave attacks, it gives a free follow-up, it blocks follow-ups, and then, just in case someone's running no follow-up, they decided to make it Diamant. That neat thing about Diamant, with the whole speed difference being 25, as opposed to 5, I don't like that. I don't like that, that they did that. It's very annoying, I don't like it. He's fast enough, as is. But of course, anyone who takes the skill will most likely also have trouble being fast enough. But I really don't like it when they work around everything out there. 
it kind of just makes skills incredibly difficult to play around and sometimes outright impossible to play around. No options. No counterplay. That's like my least favorite thing. So when they keep introducing it, it kind of just gets really annoying. And harder to deal with. Oops, don't want to do that. Engage! Um, Rosado himself is a good unit, though. His weapon. He's very good. As we'll probably see very soon, given, uh... Given that he's about to fight Marth. I mean, O'Lear. Oh, do you have an actual wolf tongue? Oh, I don't have to be afraid. You're too slow for them to get hit by. Yeah, that's pretty much all I expected to happen. Owie. Nice. You should well know. Automatic damage reduction. Um, I think he has some part of an NFU in his weapon as well. Damage reduction, but he does a nice stat drop. I think it's to attack, speed, and defense. Based on your cooldown when you fight him, minus like a given number. 16 or so. 16 times 2? Times, times 8, I think. Hello, Ivy. Yeah, that, this is the information that I've been told before. And now I'm making use of it, as I will now have you fight her. I gotta be careful, though. Ivy is very much a problem. Hmm. Very good unit. Or rather, I don't know how good she'll actually be. But a support unit. Support partner design, but not really. She's, once again, taking from her summer version, so that's neat. Being able to teleport next to anyone who's uh, across the entire map would be very problematic, as we've learned with Lilith. Although, only frequently, truth be told. I don't think we need to do much to prep Lynn for this. Ivy's not exactly fast. Free follow-up, right? Somewhere in here she gets a free follow-up. I think it's her A skill. Plus not everything, free follow-up, blocks follow-ups, and also when she does a follow-up, she kills off the introduction completely. Oh, and she also has potent follow-up for some reason. <laughs> Didn't think it'd take a... Uh, that little time before we got another potent follow-up character, but I'm sure, I guess, and it's just part of her. Her A skill. It's not linked to support part of her mechanics at all, like I figured it would be if they did it. So really, the only part of her that won't exist is just her being able to go anywhere that her partner is. But even then, they gave her a good enough replacement for it as well by making her a three-movement unit. Woo! Good thing I can go first. Oh, she got damage reduction on every hit as well. Ain't that something? Uh, let's let mom take over. Not a fan of that that uh, echo skill, by the way. I think it's ridiculous that they introduced that. I really thought they would start off small with those things, but they just didn't. Like Death Blow, Echo, then we have Attack of Echo, which is honestly just a big step from Death Blow to begin with. Alright, there's no way I could get her over there. 
Right, and then what we got? We got Fleeting Echo, which was damage reduction and a speed boost, which kind of makes Death Blow Echo also seem kind of weirdly pointless. It seems it's true. The assassination of the Emperor really has been put into motion. The mission was assigned to Hesvelger. The son of my sheet investigated the Imperial Villa. What day will the assassination take place? I, I, I'm sorry, I don't know, but I'm sure it will be soon. The Emperor needs to increase her guard, but nothing has changed. If it stays as it is, this may end exactly the way Princess Veronica fears. No, we have to do something. I want to help. I know what it feels like to lose a family member, and... Hey, I think Veronica also knows what it's like to lose a family member. In fact, she lost two, which is currently more than you guys. Then again, it's not a competition. There has to be something we can do. Hortensia. I'm the second Princess of Illusia. My wisdom and refinement are only a class by my cuteness. Cuteness? Oh, hey, your sister's here. Alright, that arcane staff is apparently is finally here, and apparently you can get stat boosts from refining this, which is uh, pretty great. I don't know. If that's true, I saw an image, I saw a screenshot, and I tend to believe the people that I see these things from. Now, I've interacted with them enough times. However, I don't know if I even want to summon on their banner yet, let alone if I really care about getting the staff or not, so I'm going to leave that to you guys to confirm. Counting on you. But yeah, she's good. It's finally here. It's not even a bad weapon. It's just got the, it's got the general stuff that most Arcanes have. I wonder if most people are disappointed with it, though. I wonder what they would expect from an arcane weapon, really. In any case, let's get this going. It's been a bit. I don't know if you guys have noticed. So I might have lost my train of thought. But uh, I think it had something to do with this lady. And I must say, uh, I, th I really do think it's crazy that that's just where we've gone. Whoa. Discord! Oh no! Uh, where'd you get so much speed from? Okay, that's an issue. We have. Oh, that's right. Hortensia gives a speed boost to everybody. So with that, plus the 14 for 57 alongside what they did to Lynn with the Discord, yeah, that would do it. Lynn isn't exactly the fastest of my units who have preempt, but she's not exactly a pushover when it comes to dealing with people like Av either. So that's just a case of Discord doing us in, which means we should probably watch out. Hmm. Let's take care of the threats. Um, but yeah, I still think it's very shocking the direction the tomb skills have gone. I thought for sure they would, like, at least mellow it out. Like, give us no follow-up, but only against physical units. And then, you know, magical units. And then we would also have, like, tempo skills. Or just tempo effect, you know? I thought they'd be like minute things that would change, not what they are now, where they're just this and then that, like with Death Blow Echo, where it really wasn't much, but it's something, it's extra. I will like have tempo, the no follow up levels that I mentioned earlier. You know, small stuff. Oh, it was as small as no follow up can be. Like, oh. Physical no follow no follow up against physical units no follow up against magical units <laughs> versions of no follow up that block out that prevent follow free follow ups and ones that help you push through with your follow ups you know but no 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 they went 
all in. It was no use. She refused to believe what I had to say. Neither the Emperor nor the court of the Imperial Guard seems alarmed at all. That's crazy. I've done all I can. I have an idea. But you have to keep what I'm about to tell you a secret, alright? Of course. The Order of Heroes was originally formed in order to deal with special missions a normal army could not. I personally trained for that sole purpose as much as I could pos as I possibly could whenever I could. So trust me when I tell you that what I'm about to suggest must never be known publicly. Oh my. The Emperor and the Count are not prepared for an assassination. So the assassin has an easy job. So we need only convince them the Emperor is being targeted. I've already done my best to convince both my mother and the Count. They will not believe me. So, if they won't believe your words, perhaps a little incident will convince them with action. Ho 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 ho! Oh! Alright, Anna! Suppose there were an early attempt on the Emperor's life. What do you mean? Before the real assassination attempt? If there were to be some way to get the Emperor to recognize the risk, would that not be it? She right. It's not a card I really want to play, but we're running low on options. We have some of our foes' as equipment from our previous encounters with them. We can simply make use of those and launch an attack on the villa as a mysterious enemy. Alright, let's go! Anna out here with her own devious thoughts and plans. Oh, let's go! She really is a commander. That's crazy. And here I thought it was just Alphonse who gets to do devious things and think hard. Most Annas scheme for money. Our Anna, she just... She schemes for, like, proper things. Alright, let's see, let's go on. Subversion, let's see where this goes. Over here, everyone. We're in. Ooh. Guards are running to the broken wall of the villa. It's quite the commotion. What? Oh, you guys just broke a wall? The Imperial Villa has come under attack. That news will send a shock through all of Umbra. The Count and the Emperor will make real effort to strengthen their guard. Their yeah. If nothing else, we forced our foe to completely rethink their assassination plans. Yes, but we have to get out of here and get as far away as we can. We cannot be caught. So, like, why are we fighting them? <laughs> uh, should I just assume, have my own little head cannon that they are here simply because they are the guards? I don't know. I guess. Steady now. In any case, I don't think too hard about it. This is some annoying landscape. What is this? An actual fire emblem map? Extra movement. It's just can't tell. Oh, you're the one who hits us with Discord, huh? I'm here. Then I guess I will simply put a here. Oh yeah, that was another train of thought I had. When I first saw Kagetsu, I saw some character designs. Kagetsu was one of them. You can teleport? Oh! The stupid attune skill, right, that mistake. Die.
Anyway, that was a hasty decision, but I made it all the same. No hesitation whatsoever. Yes. Hmm. Unfortunately, this is the best that I can do. I would love to support Alir more than anyone, but I can't do that while also debuffing Ailu. I guess it wouldn't have helped since he doesn't have no follow-up built in. This is one annoying map since I can't exactly get to them. So I just have to wait for three movement to kick in and waltz on over here. No, that's not what I mean. Kicking in is so annoying. Also, why does she dress like that? I wonder. No, no, I don't think that's what my issue is. What is that thing on her head and why does she wear it? I'm very curious about Lucia being the country of knowledge. They don't, and all the characters don't seem very focused on that whole knowledge aspect, especially with the fact that their emblem is Ling. Not exactly a character who pursues knowledge, more like she pursues freedom, freedom more than anything. Anyway, Fast Vulgar! I had not expected the Order of Heroes would go this far. That Atosca warned of an attack on the villa, but I did not expect them to strike so quickly. Nevertheless, the situation has not changed. There is no escaping Father's will. Whew! If we never do another mission like that, it will be too- if we- if we- wait. If we never do another mission like that, it will be too soon? Huh? Wait. What do you mean it will be too soon? Isn't that a good thing? My nerves are shot. But we can be satisfied knowing Princess Veronica's mother will be safe now. Don't tell me she- don't tell me the Emperor yelled at you or something. This is Veronica, what is it? Don't tell me. After your mission, the Count finally recognized the danger and set about strengthening the defenses. I thought she would be safe, but... Mother was... An Assassin King. Whoa. They are doing everything they can, but it is uncertain whether she will survive. What about the guards? How did the assassin get in? It was the head of the Imperial Guard, the Count himself, who has served at my mother's side so many years. It was him, his lance. If... then... what? No one could have suspected this betrayal. It seems unthinkable. Everything I know about the Imperial Guard has told me there is no way to turn them. With money or threat. They are said to hold the Emperor above all else. Even above their own families. How could this have happened? We were careless. We failed to consider this as an option available to the Assassin. We thought only in terms of adding more people close to the Emperor to guard her. The ceremony affirming the peace is close, and now the Emperor's life hangs in the balance. What happens now with the peace between Asker and Embla? What, what do we do? That's annoying. 
Hmm. That is a thought that occurred. Like, what if it's just like some noble's plan to just actually off her? So either this is a case of maybe the healing hands are just everywhere. And that guy was just a double agent this whole time. So no matter how loyal he was to Embla and the Emperor, he's more loyal to the Healing Hands, who, funnily enough, I guess they would consider, he considers his family. Also, they noted that it was a male and that it was his lance. Honestly, when I heard that, it made me think of Zacharias. But Zacharias is dead, so. Zacharias Bruno. I still think we should get a Lance Bruno just to, like, homage to whatever Zacharias was supposed to do. Alright, so the Emperor is in critical condition. Uh, we were worried about the healing hands, but it seems that there was just more issues than just them. This is dicey. And I wonder just how much is uh, on the line to make sure that we do not have peace with Embla. It's crazy. I guess there's only more to do. You just gotta wait and see. Dang. All right, so yeah, thank you all very much for watching. Feel free to let me know how you guys felt about this chapter, what you think is going to happen next. And, uh, well, I don't know. Freaking Ivy got me killed twice. I lost Lynn twice. She has no attachment to Lynn whatsoever. That's messed up. Let alone to the Divine One. That's crazy. Freaking unloyal fraud. 